Hello everyone and welcome to the SBI Securities weekly wrap podcast. So firstly let's discuss how the markets have been in the week gone by. The Indian benchmark indices during the week closed on a flat note after two consecutive negative weeks. The indices moved in a narrow range as global queues remained subdued on account of surging US bond yield, spike in dollar index, upbeat US employment data and continued FII selling. The crude oil prices after touching one year high of $97 per barrel receded to $84 per barrel on the back of demand concerns. The new job opening in US for August 2023 came in at 9.6 million versus the expectations of 8.8 million, indicating an upbeat US job market and fueling the bond yields to 16 year high at around 4.8%. The RBI MPC kept the benchmark interest rate unchanged which was in line with the expectations. While the status quo was maintained, RBI sounded cautious over the current external environment like tight financial condition, geopolitical tensions and volatile food and energy prices. Next week, market will digest the macro data like CPI and WPI for September month along with August month IIP reading. Additionally, India's second quarter FY24 earnings season will kick off with TCS declaring its September quarter results on 11th October, followed by Infosys and HCL Tech on 12th October. The recent provisional updates from few selected companies from the banking, NBFC, FMCG, retail and real estate sectors are pointing towards good earnings season. However, the markets would closely track the management commentary's post results on the macro outlook and the demand trends. Sectorally, IT sector will be in great focus next week as companies from these sector will start posting their results. Moving on to the key economic developments during the week, first, the RBI's monetary policy committee decided to keep the benchmark repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. It also kept the growth and inflation forecast unchanged for FY24 at 6.5% and 5.4% respectively. The governor also reiterated that the monetary policy remains decisively focused on aligning inflation to the 4% target on a durable basis. Second, India's manufacturing activity slowed down in September month with the manufacturing PMI falling to its 5 month low of 57.5. The decline was primarily due to a softer increase in new orders although export orders remained strong. Despite this, firms in the sector remain optimistic and expect output levels to increase in the next 12 months. The Indian Services PMI data for September month was also out this week. The Services PMI stood at 61 in September compared to 60.1 in August month. India's export growth eased to the slowest pace since June 2023 but remained in the expansionary territory for eighth consecutive month. The composite PMI also rose slightly from 60.9 in August to 61 in September 2023. Some important economic data scheduled for next week are CPI, WPI and trade data for September month and IIP data for August month. Taking a look on some of the key provisional business updates from the companies during the week. Firstly from the banking and NBFC sector, Bandhan Bank reported 12.3% year on year growth in its advances at rupees 1.0 lakh crore for the second quarter of FY24 and 12.8% year on year growth in total deposits at rupees 1.12 lakh crore so overall the update was positive for bandhan bank second federal bank's total deposits grew 23% year on year to rupees 2.3 lakh crore and gross advances grew 20% year on year close to rupees 2 lakh crore so overall the update was positive for federal bank as well hdfc bank's gross advances at merged entity level grew 57.7% year on year to rupees 23.5 lakh crores On a like to like basis advances of the bank grew 17.6% year on year and 5.5% quarter on quarter to rupees 23.3 lakh crores the bank's deposits grew 29.9% year on year to approximately 21.7 lakh crore rupees overall numbers were broadly as per the guidance given by bank to grow advances by 17 to 18% on merged entity basis going ahead Net interest margin and asset quality would be key metrics to track as management has guided for net interest margin compression and marginal asset quality deterioration. On the PSU bank space, Bank of Maharashtra's gross advances and deposits grew 23.6% and 22.2% year on year to rupees 1.8 lakh crores and rupees 2.4 lakh crores respectively. Overall, the provisional numbers were better than industry growth rates. We expect the stock to outperform in the long term as well. Bank of Baroda's second quarter FY24 total advances and deposits grew by 17.4% and 14.6% year on year to rupees 10.3 lakh crores and rupees 12.5 lakh crores respectively. 
the overall growth was better than the management guidance of 14 to 15 percent growth in loan book. The stock may outperform in the long term. Ujjivan Small Finance Bank Limited's total deposits grew 43 percent and 9 percent year on year and quarter on quarter, respectively, to rupees 29,134 crore. Advances were up 27 percent year on year and 5 percent quarter on quarter at rupees 26,600 crores. Disbursements also remained robust at Rs 5,749 crores, registering growth of 18% year-on-year and 9% quarter-on-quarter. Overall, the provisional numbers were strong as deposit mobilization drive helped it to grow deposits faster than advances. Taking a look on the overall private sector banks and NBFCs, they have delivered double-digit growth in their advances. The numbers are broadly in line with their guidance. Advances have grown faster than deposits for most banks and this means that banks have been facing competition and deposit mobilization. Going ahead, as the deposit rates gets fully priced in, the movement in NIM and spread would be key to watch out. We believe select PSU banks with solid asset quality base along with private sector banks to deliver strong performance in the upcoming result season. The retail growth still remains healthy and upcoming festive season will drive the overall advances. Taking a look on some of the provisional business numbers from the real estate sector, Macrotech Developers Limited reported a 12% year-on-year growth in its sales booking, reaching to Rs 3,530 crores in second quarter of FI24. The company also achieved 48% of its FI24 pre-sales guidance of Rs 14,500 crores. The update from the company was positive and fundamentally we also maintain a positive view on the company given its strong financial profile and healthy medium-term guidance by the company management. Soba Limited recorded its highest ever quarterly sales value of Rs 1,724 crores, up 48% on a year-on-year -year basis. It also recorded historically highest quarterly new sales area of 1.69 million square feet, registering growth of 26% year-on-year. The average price realization of Rs 10,223 per square feet was up 17.4% on a year-on-year -year basis. So, the update from Soba Limited was also very strong. However, we have a neutral stance on the company given its high promoter pledge and some deceleration seen in its net profitability numbers in the last three years. Prestige Estates also registered record-breaking highest half-yearly sales of Rs 11,007 crores, which was up 69% year-on-year in first half of FI24. The quarterly sales stood at Rs 7,093 crores, up 102% year-on-year. The sales area during the quarter was 6.84 million square feet, up 50% year-on-year. So, strong business updates were there from Prestige Estates as well. So, the overall real estate companies so far have reported robust set of sales numbers with growth driven by both sales volume and average price realization. The other economic indicators such as consistent double-digit growth in GST collections, surge in capital expenditure spending, credit growth, pause in interest rate hikes are positive for the real estate sector. Moving on to the consumption companies, Marico reported low single-digit volume growth in its domestic business. The major brands of the company like Parachute Coconut Oil and Sephola Edible Oils posted low single-digit volume growth during the quarter. The company reported low single-digit value growth in its value-added hair oil segment as well. The international business delivered double-digit CC growth despite volatile global operating environment. Consolidated revenue was marginally down year-on-year -year due to price corrections taken by the company in domestic market over the last one year. On the input prices front, Copra and Edible Oil prices remained favourable during the quarter. Rebound in rural growth was impacted due to rising food prices and below normal rainfall distribution. Management expects some recovery to be seen in the second half of FI24. The update was more on the weaker side given the low-digit volume growth. However, there is scope for expansion in gross and operating profit margins on largely stable input prices. The company expects operating profit to grow in low double digit in second quarter of FI24. The street has reacted negatively on Marico's provisional business updates. However, we expect volume recovery in second half of FI24 and margin improvement in the coming quarters and thereby we maintain positive stance on the company for medium to long term investment. Godrej Consumer Products organic business delivered mid-single-digit volume growth with home care and personal care volumes growing in mid-single-digit and low-single-digits respectively. Park Avenue and Kama Sutra brand's performance improved on sequential basis and is on track to achieve full-year guidance. Management expects to report mid-single-digit sales growth including organic business for the second quarter of FI24. So similar to Marico, Godrej Consumer has reported weak volume growth during the quarter in a tough operating environment. However, operating profit and margins are likely to be healthy in the upcoming result.
We hold a fundamentally positive view on the company for medium to long term investment given the company's capex plans for volume growth and growth coming in from the portfolio of its RCCL acquisition in the next 1 to 2 years. Another company from the consumption space, Kalyan Jewelers reported healthy provisional business numbers. The company's consolidated revenues grew around 27% year on year in the second quarter of FY24. The domestic business registered growth of around 32% year on year led by healthy same store sales growth across all the key markets in the country. The company also signed 6 LOIs for the first set of pilot franchise showrooms in the south region which are expected to launch in second half of FY24. We maintain positive view on Kalyan Jewelers given its focus on ROC accretive franchisee led business model though valuations have become slightly expensive. So looking at the overall summary the update so far from the FMCG space is indicating lower single digit volume growth especially in a narrative where company management in the previous result season have indicated growth to be driven by volumes and not by price. So view so far for the FMCG space looks slightly on a weaker side. In the auto space Retail sales for Tata Motors JLR grew 21% year on year in second quarter of FY24 to 1,6561 units, while wholesale volumes grew 29% year on year to 96,817 units. JLR's order book stood at 1.68 lakh units, and the company states an expectation of becoming free cash flow positive with 300 million pounds in second quarter of FY24. So overall, the update was positive for the company. Ashok Leyland reported 9% year on year volume growth in September month led by 79% growth in the bus segment. The outlook going ahead is extremely positive with CV demand expected to be robust on the back of increased infrastructure, mining and real estate activity and orders for EV buses from city and state corporations. TVS Motors reported 7% year on year volume growth in September month. Exports are seen to be recovering and the outlook for the company is positive with slew of EV launches ahead across scooters, motorcycles and three wheelers. Moving on to the metal space, APL Apollo Tube second quarter FI24 sales volumes grew 12% year on year to 674761 tons. The management has guided a sales volume of 28 lakh tons for FI24 and the company is well on track to achieve the set guidance. The share of value added products was stable at 55% during the quarter. We believe the sales mix to improve further in the coming quarters with rising contribution of innovative products from its Raipur plant. We continue to remain positive on the stock from medium to long term investment. NMDC second quarter sales volume stood at 9.68 metric tons which was up 11.4% year on year but was down 13.1% on a quarter on quarter basis. The company has taken a price hike of rupees 300 per ton for iron ore lump and fines in the September month which indicates a recovery in international prices so the overall update was positive for the company coal india limited reported a 12.6% year on year increase in coal production in the september month the company's production increased to 55.1 million tons compared to 48.9 million tons in september month of 2022 Some major companies which will be announcing their September quarter results next week are HCL Tech, Infosys, HDFC Life Insurance, TCS, HDFC AMC, etc. For weekly gainers or losers on Nifty 50, Commodity Price Tracker and key corporate actions in next week, kindly refer to our weekly wrap up report. The link to view the report is shared in the description box below. This was all about the weekly market podcast. Thanks for listening. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.